And Mr. Kennedy, one of the biggest controversies surrounding your candidacy is your stance on childhood vaccines. Nearly every scientific and medical organization, including the CDC, the FDA, the AMA, the American Academy of Pediatrics, all say you're wrong on this issue. This leads us to our very first question from our audience. It's Dr. Tariq Butt, who specializes- I would ask you one thing, on what issue? On childhood vaccines. What about them? And whether they ever cause autism or damage kids. They all okay. say these vaccines are, have never, saved millions they never of lives. never damage kids. I don't think anybody has said they never have. There might be a child here, but overall, all those organizations say vaccines are safe and have saved millions and millions of lives. Okay. But let's get to our audience question from Dr. Butts. Good evening. Eradication of chickenpox and polio from the US and many parts of the world is a direct result of regular vaccines. Measles, mumps, rubella, and many diseases are preventable. And there's little to no evidence of these diseases in vaccinated population. Your vaccine stance is dangerous to the health and well-being of millions. Medical experts are deeply concerned about your message. How can we help you to come to the side of science? Uh, what was the question? How can you help me come to my senses? No. No, no. Side of science? You are a very smart person. <laughs> Uh, okay, so, you know, I, don't, I think most people don't know what my stance is on vaccines. I've never been anti-vaccine. And I've said that hundreds and hundreds of times, but it doesn't matter. Um, because that is a way of silencing me, using that pejorative to describe me as a way of silencing or marginalizing me. Um, my position on vaccines, I think, is it, I think of, of virtually every American would agree with my stance on vaccines, which is that vaccines should be tested like other medicines. They should be safety tested. And unfortunately, the vaccines are not safety tested. They're not, uh, there's, in the, of the 72 vaccine doses now mandated, essentially mandated, they're recommended, but they're really mandated, for American children, none of them, not one, has ever been subject to a pre-licensing placebo-controlled trial. Yes, they have. No. Yes, yeah, uh, they have. Okay, let, let me just say something. Dr. Fauci and many other people for many years said this, and yet Bobby Kennedy, when he says that, is wrong. So I met with Dr. Fauci in 2016, you know, and I agreed to go on Trump's Vaccine Safety Commission, and I was with Aaron Siri and uh, Lynn Redwood and uh, a, a number of other people, and we said to him, can you show us one test from any vaccine? Pre-licensing safety test, and he said, uh, I'll send it to you. I can't find one now. He never did. So we sued him. We sued H Aaron Zeri and I sued HHS. And after a year of litigation and stonewalling, they said that they could not provide a single safety study for any vaccine that is on the childhood schedule, pre-licensing safety study. So anybody who wants to read that can go to my web, to the Children's Health Defense website and you can read HHS's admission that not a single one has ever been safety tested pre-licensing. Now, um, what I've said is other medicines are required to do that and we should have to do that for vaccines. If I'm wrong, show me the test, show me the study. You won't be able to because there are none. That means that we don't know what the long-term risks are, the risk profile of those products. And I'll give you, you and me, you mentioned chicken pox. So when, when CDC was thinking of recommending this chicken pox vaccine as mandating for children, um, the, they did a study and the scientists they hired to do that study was a scientist called Gary Goldman, a contract scientist. And he did the study in an isolated place in California called Antelope Valley, a long-term study. And what they find is if you give the chicken pox vaccine, mass vaccinate with chicken pox, it stops chicken pox, but it causes shingles epidemics later on, which are 20 times as deadly as chicken pox. So if you go, so we, no, nevertheless, despite those studies, we mandated for American children in this country. In Europe, they don't. If you go to the British National Health Service website right now, you can read on that where they say, we do not recommend chicken pox vaccines because it causes shingles epidemics later on. And that's the problem. You can't just look at, you know, you can say that this 
product is going to prevent this particular disease. But you have to look at the long-term impacts. You know, vaccines like other medicines have injuries that have long-term, long diagnostic horizons and, and long incubation periods that if you do not do long-term studies on a placebo-controlled studies, comparing vaccinated populations to unvaccinated populations, you won't do it. Let me just give you one quick other example. The most popular vaccine in the world is the DTP vaccine, diphtheria, tetanus, and pertussis. We, we, banned it, we got rid of it in this country because it was causing injuries, brain injuries, severe brain injuries or death to one in every 300 children. We used it in the 80s, and that's why there was all this litigation against vaccine companies that precipitated the passage of the Vaccine Act that then gave them uh, immunity from liability. But in Europe, they don't use it. In America, they don't use it. But we give it to 161 million African children a year. So Bill Gates asked the Danish government to support that program and said it saved 30 million lives. The Danish government said, show us the data. He wasn't able to. So they went to Africa and did their own studies. And they looked at 30 years of DTP data. And what they found shocked them all. They found that girls who got the DTP were dying at 10 times the rate of unvaccinated girls. And, but they were dying what? of things that nobody had ever associated with the vaccine. They were dying of diphtheria, of, of anemia, malaria, bilharzia, uh, pulmonary disease, respiratory disease, and pneumonia. And nobody noticed for 30 years that it was the vaccinated girls and not the unvaccinated girls who were dying. And what had happened is these girls were not dying of diphtheria, tetanus, and pertussis. The vaccine had protected them against those, but it had also ruined their immune systems. And they were unable to defend themselves against other just minor diseases that were that other kids who had hardy immune systems were able to fend off. So that's why you need these long-term studies. And that's why I'm worried that we don't do that here in the United States. And we do have evidence of that, like there are clinical trials, randomized trial, and there's a difference between association and causation, right? Somebody can take a medication and get involved in a motor vehicle accident. It doesn't mean that, you know, that that is associated, but it was not caused by medication unless we get to the bottom of it. So many times we should continue to figure out ways to, you know, for the safety of vaccines, of course, and medical community is always looking for that. But at the same time, you know, like we can we, we can really come to agreement that vaccines are important. They do prevent those diseases. After all, you know, smallpox was in the world, all around the world. It's not there anymore. Yeah. So there is evidence of that. But then there's diseases, you know, when we pass the Vaccine Act, when I was a kid, there was only three vaccines and I was compliant. But when we passed the Vaccine Act, it made vaccines very, very valuable. And all of a sudden there was a gold rush to add a lot of new vaccines to the schedule for diseases that aren't even casually contagious, like rotavirus, like hepatitis B. Why are we giving hepatitis B vaccine to a one day old child? You, hepatitis B, you know, the, the, the major vectors for that are, are it's sexually transmitted or by needles. Why would you give that to a one day old trial? It, it's, it's really a profit motive. Now, you're right that correlation is not causation, but the Institute of Medicine has looked at the vaccine schedule and said in, in their 2011 report, there are over 150 injuries that are likely to be associated with vaccines that have never been studied. So it's the CDC's responsibility to do those studies and they've been ordered again and again and again to do them and they have refused. And that's wrong. We need an agency that is putting public health first and not pharmaceutical profits. You, you were talking about the, the, um, about the opioid crisis. The opioid crisis, you know, started with the oxycodone. Now it's, you know, fentanyl. But the, the company, the same companies that got the FDA to lie to us about the addiction, addictiveness, lie to every doctor in this country about the addictiveness of oxycodone and get a whole generation addicted. Those are the same companies that make these, you know, other products. And the pharmaceutical, the four companies that make vaccines in this country, Merck, Sanofi, Glaxo, and Pfizer, have paid over $35 billion in criminal penalties over the past decade for lying to doctors, for falsifying science, for defrauding regulators. 
and we need, the, you know, we need to keep an eye on them. We can't just trust them. If they say it's a vaccine, you know, we all, we all trust it. Uh, we need to have actual science on it. And I think what well, that's all I say. I, I don't want to I don't want to get rid of vaccines. If you want to take a vaccine, you should be able to do it. But we need good science. And that's all I've asked for. But so what what do you say to people? I mean, it sounds like you're saying that Every scientist, every government, uh, our government, governments around the world, doctors like Dr. Butts are are all lying about vaccines. I've never said anything like that. They, you, look, the listen. AMA, the A, the American Academy well, of Pediatrics, they all, and the FDA says, and in fact, on its website, you can clearly see vaccines are. They go through three stages of FDA testing against double-blind placebos. They already well, do that I, testing I, for vaccines. I, I, Elizabeth, you, you, you can say that. I'm telling I'm you. I'm not saying that. The FDA, no, the is, FDA saying that. is not saying that. Yes, because they do on their website. They have not. They will not tell you that vaccines have, have that there's any vaccine that has ever undergone a long-term placebo-controlled trial prior to licensure. They will not, because that's not true. And they've, you know, you can go to my website and see where HHS says, yeah, there are none. Well, I, we have uh, competing websites say saying different let me things. Say this. You know, I'm not saying the AMA is lying or the doctors are lying. What I'm saying is the FDA does lie. And the FDA lied to us about Vioxx. They knew that the Vioxx was causing heart attacks, but they let, they let doctors believe that it was a, a, a medicine that was, uh, that was uh, um, good, beneficial for headaches and arthritis without telling them that they were going to kill me. And they ended up killing between 120,000 and 500,000. all these doctors and all no. these scientists around the world who say vaccines are safe and have saved millions and millions of the lives. Same, the same people said Vioxx was safe. The same people said opioids that... that uh, that oxycodone was not addictive because FDA said it and they believe them. And that's the problem. We have a corrupt federal agency that's lying to the AMA, to, you know, to all of those agencies and all of the doctors, and they believe them. But those agencies are controlled by pharma. That is the problem. And that's what I'm trying to end as president. You know that your own family doesn't support, many members of your own family don't support your position on vaccines. Your brother, your sister, and your niece have all written an editorial saying on vaccines, Bobby is wrong. His work on vaccines is having heartbreaking consequences. What's your response? Your own family thinks you're wrong on this. Does your family agree with everything that you said? Definitely yeah. not. <laughs> you got me on that one.